Uh, so welcome in, guys. It's Ashika D and D. Um, I guess we should do the thing again. Uh, well, can, can, let's speed through introducing ourselves. Uh, I'm Chickadee. Uh, Prodan's she they. I'm the dungeon master. Uh, I got red with me. R red with me. Chris with me. And Tex with me. I suppose we should just uh, jump right into it. So the actual spot that we like left off um, was uh, you guys had been talking to um, some people at this hunting out post um, and they've let you uh, stay for the night while you try to figure out how you're going to commune with the Dreamweaver. Uh, <clears throat> Lutruda and Harry head over to the camp while Latruda is looking for some pretty people and Harry is looking to do a little bit of like intelligence uh gathering sitting at this fire there is one person um sitting over like a cauldron uh stirring and adding things in every so often tasting it uh he stands out because he has short uh dark blonde hair um a short like soft looking beard uh he's a little bit broader than everybody else around but still very slim uh he has like very toned arms um a little bit of a belly um and then sitting next to the fire there are two more people <clears throat> um there is uh, so this person stands out. Um, she has red curly hair. Uh, she looks like she's a little bit smaller than everybody else around, um, a little curvier than everybody else. Uh, she has like warm tan skin uh, that's laden with uh, freckles. And then there's a third person um, who has very long, very dark hair, very pale skin. Um, and she is, like, much taller and, like, longer than everybody else. Uh, she seems to be, like, working on something in her lap, her fingers, like, moving very quickly, very nimbly. Do you mind if I join you around the fire? I need to rest my leg. Or we, we join you? The, like, redhead will pipe up and say, yeah, sure, gra grab a stump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plunk myself down and take off my, uh... I wouldn't like uh, so Drugar wants to kind of scope it out he's not entirely trusting of everything that's going on here yeah that so th this entire time that you've been talking to him like he's definitely been listening to you but his gaze has been on the forest the entire time got you and uh, then, like, <laughs> Drugar will make it really uncomfortable like, so like if, if his head's over here like looking around he's gonna kind of like go side by side be like, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you see what you're looking at so, like, as you get closer, he'll kind of, like, look at you, but then he'll just, like, kind of, like, tur turn back to where he was looking, and he'll, like, start pointing out, like, uh, some things that he sees. Not long after this, Laurel shows up with a little bit of a party behind her. Laurel seems to be kind of a leader around the hunting outpost. As the, the man at the cauldron is starting to... Um, he, he, like, takes one last, last little, like, uh, taste of the food that he's making. He's like, oh, perfect, it's ready. And just, just as he says that, um, there's some, like, rustling in the trees, and a couple of people walk out of them. Um, the one in front, uh, is a tall lady. Uh, she held, holds herself very proudly. She has, um, dark blonde hair, mostly straight, um... And, and, like, the second she walks through, she, like, eyes in on, like, the new people um, that she doesn't recognize. You must be the people uh, that are looking to speak with the Dreamweaver. Ah, uh, you are correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well astute. There's something special about you guys. Wow. Um, okay. Um, I, f I feel like we we've missed a piece here. I was very excited um, yeah. when I noticed uh, Fox and the, this link that you have. I'm Laurel. Um, um, so if please. you don't have any questions right away, I am very hungry. Um, I would like to go eat, but if you want to come sit with me and ask questions while I do that, please feel free. And then I'll Drugar will lead into the other two folks. Do you, do you guys have any questions regarding the Dreamweaver? I know that we're looking to speak to to it, um, but uh, what's going I mean, on? How to I, how I, how it could get into the Fade? Does it know about the Fade? Um, these why, are what? Yes, good questions. Right, yes, probably <laughs> all all of the above. All of the above. Also, a time frame on the protection thing would probably be good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
We we we, we can jumbo gumbo if we need to. Shall we uh, join Laurel now then? The party asks Laurel a couple of questions about the Dreamweaver and she tells them the story of the Dreamweaver and how they became to be an ascended hero. Perhaps the best way to explain how the Dreamweaver works is to just tell you her story. Absolutely. Sure, let's go. In life, she was a weaver. She worked on embroidery. She made tapestries. She did seamstressing. However, she also had like an uncanny ability to know what was going on and what was about to happen. This ability grew not naturally, but by her like working on it, practicing it, honing it. She started with trance work where she would brew herself a cup of valerian tea uh, she would light some lavender incense and she would go into a trance uh, sitting at her loom. And while she was in that trance, she would create a tapestry. Uh, in the beginning, uh, when she awoke from the trance, she would have to kind of uh, decipher what it meant. But as she worked on this uh, and her power grew, uh, she was able to just kind of make the pictures that she saw during her trance. And so it was much easier for her to read what they meant. Her power grew and she was eventually able to bestow it on others. Uh, so uh, she became very good at like letting people sleep uh, so people would go to her for that. But she would also uh, be able to help them get into a trance and then she would sit behind them at her loom um, and she would go into a trance herself. And there was some sort of like psychic bond between them where she would help them make a tapestry uh, from what they were seeing in their trance. And it's important that she did. Because one morning, she woke up from going to bed normally, but she was sitting at her loom and there was a tapestry created in front of her. So she, she must have like slept, walked over and just like that this happened to her rather than her choosing to have this happen. And the picture was of her forest, the forest that we're in right now. Uh, being destroyed. Usually the story, uh, we don't tell um, who it is that did that. Most people have forgotten, uh, mostly just to like not have too much fear of the world. Hmm. Oh. Uh, mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But d despite who it is, the dream weather... The the dream weaver uh, gathered as many magical people as she could, druids and wizards, wh whoever was available. And um, they all stood in a circle around the tree in, in the city back there. Um, and she uh, created that psychic bond with them. And with it, uh, she used their magic to create um, a shield around the forest. The, the enemy came, they barraged that shield. Eventually, um, it was too much for them, but she started, so, uh, she started to pull back the psychic bond. So she was taking all of that shielding on herself and it began to be too much. With her last breath, uh, she sent that magic out, all of that magic that she had uh, like gathered up. She sent it out and infused the forest. And with that, the beasts came to the, the aid of the forest and started fighting as well. And that was the turning point. And that is what saved the forest. Once that happened, everybody says that uh, they like watched her soul rise up and then disappear. And that protection never really left uh so when you like if you do go into the deep forest um you will see these protectors still existing there they have their dinner they sit around the campfire a little bit longer and then laurel offers to show them where they'll be staying for the night all right so tea is being made yeah. yeah that's fair so um you guys can like have your tea um, and then she's uh she's gonna like ask if you want to be shown like where you guys are staying for the night kind of thing Ooh. Oh, I was going to sleep in the wagon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a tent would be nice. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll absolutely provide you a tent. So <laughs> as, as she walks you guys over, uh, she'll say, uh, now that we're, like, away from everybody else, um, I know that you wanted to know, like, who the enemy was. And uh, you know how when you first came in, you were thrown a piece of iron um, and my husband told you it was because he wanted to make sure you weren't fey? Damn. Oh, yes. Um, it's not so much for that. Like, what? while we are worried about Fae that we don't know about coming in because we are so close to the deep forest, that might pull some, like, protectors out. Uh, but there's, like, other beings that we're worried about, too. Um, just, like, traditionally, uh, 
because of who that enemy was, and it it was fiends. All right. Um. So fiends. Um. Are we likely to stumble across them? Um. Is it something that, you know, has happened before around here? Honestly, no. Uh. Again, it feels more like a traditional thing. Um, to be making sure that we're safe. I think I think it's kind of like an instilled cultural fear um, that's also been kind of hidden away. Then, wh then why are you the f then why are you the Fey folks and and you guys kind of at odds? I don't think that we are. I think we've kind of put that on them in our head. Did, did we? Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. no, can I say this? <laughs> we just kind of rolled in. So we hunt in Fae, and they're like, no? And we're like, ah. Uh, since night is falling, uh, Harry and Drugar decide to go to bed. While the Trudy decides to stay up, goes back to the fire, and ch chats a bit with Talus, uh, ending up spending the night in her tent. As you probably see you in the morning, I think I'm going to hang around a little more. Make sure you get some sleep, okay? As oh, okay. I slip away back to the camp uh, fire with uh, okay. night with uh, Talis. <laughs> sure. Um, are are the rest of you right. going to sleep? Uh, hey. Kind of. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jugar is definitely going to go to the bathroom at night and kind of scope around what, what how the evening dealings are. I'm gonna, in the most polite way, try and. Get lucky. Okay. Nice. Ooh. How how exactly would you go about this? Like, would you be like trying to persuade? Would you be trying to deceive? Like, <laughs> intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be an option too. Obviously. No. Oh, no. Uh, uh. It'd be. It'd be more. Would, would you be trying to like yeah perform like do like try to be like your best flirtatious oh, self kind of thing. There will be some performance involved, I'm sure. <laughs> 19. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, I, as, I'm, as I'm the not. night like goes on, um, slowly everybody else starts to leave. You are still like fully engaged in conversation with Talus, uh, being cheeky, and she's being cheeky back. Um, Ooh, and so true. if you were to like Ooh. make a move, she would definitely... Um, like reciprocate like if you were to be like hey let's go back to your tent or whatever she would probably do that so that then the question begs do you spend the night in her tent or, you or do you leave oh no um, let's true does a cuddler okay we're gonna we're gonna spend the night drugar still being a little uneasy gets up to go pee during the middle of the night but really he just wants to take a look around it is now the middle of the night uh, Harry's asleep, Latruda is uh, cuddling at Talus, and Drugar wakes up to go pee. So yes. what exactly are you looking to do here? Basically, Drugar has no 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 plans on peeing. He just kind of wants to not sneak out, but pretend like he's going to the bathroom and really to survey the defenses, how, how kind of things interact in the night environment. He does have dark vision, so... He's he's really trying to see. He's just trying to see how the camp kind of operates at night, and if it's any different, or if there's any type of heebie-jeebies, or for example, if there's any type of, you know, light or or kind of like you know, fey type of thing that's going on, shimmering. Obviously, his main his main thing is trying to. He's also probably kind of really reminiscing on the fact that the Dreamweaver might be able to unlock memories that may have been lost or or anything like that. So he's probably kind of kind of in his own he head a little bit, but also like just trying to honestly kind of get a real feel for how this camp operates. Uh, it, it's basically just like, uh, like a regular encampment would have with people on watch um, in case anything funky is going on, but you don't Great. see anything funky. Harry ends up pranking him. Uh, Drugar takes it seriously. This will perhaps lead to some problems in the future. We will see. Once Drugar returns to the tent, um, he'll kind of like nudge Harry awake for for a quick second. Cool. All right, then he won't even he he he'll be like fiends, right? That's kind of messed up. Do you, and then be like, we got to be. He, he like Drugar knows nothing about fiends, so he he's kind of looking for you for any type of information, being like, "Do you know what fiends are, or what what kind of walking into type of scenario?" 
Uh, not specifically. They might be they might be partially related to uh, denarians from back in my world. He, he he's always wanted to get rid of it, but can't because he feels that if he gets rid of it, things will get worse. So it's okay. he's just kind of looking at it and and he goes to to Harry be like, "Do you mean like a coin like this?" You can tell like by looking it, at it that it's, it's not, that it's not the same as a yeah. denarian coin. Um. Okay, I'm you you wait. obviously wouldn't know if denarians exist uh, here or not, um, but like um, that's certainly not a coin. I just want you to lay like, next to each other like this. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna use what my, are you thinking about? I just want to use my magic quickly to ch uh, check it and see if there's anything inside it. Okay, so as soon as it touches my hand, I'm going to use prestidigitation <laughs> to make a sizzling sound and make us like a little bit of steam go up. I'm going to go, ah, and drop it on the ground. And then, uh... Drugar will instantly grab it because he doesn't want to lose it. <laughs> we, no, no, because he knows it hasn't burned him before. I'll, uh, I'll... I'll put two fingers on your forehead. I'll use prestidigitation to make the smell of sulfur fill the tent. <laughs> Oh, eggs. Ugh. Did yeah. you fart? No, I think that's coming out of you. Me? Did I fart? I don't think so. I think it's the demon. <gasps> you you exercised me. Before <clears throat> before we go to bed, I'm just going to go, uh, Drigar? Yeah? I was joking, by the way. There was no demon in the coin. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> At that point, Drigar thinks to himself, Maybe he's possessed now. Maybe he's the one that has the demon. Because that's what the demon oh, no. would say. Oh no! It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> You're not really possessed. <laughs> the next morning, uh, Drugar leaves the tent, finding Latruda already sitting at the campfire. Uh, before Harry gets up and finds them, uh, Drugar decides to tell them about the coin incident. Uh, Latruda doesn't seem too perturbed by it. Harry comes over and they end the conversation there, making some crude jokes about where Latruda was that night. Drugar will instantly run to Latruda and absolutely like say, like, listen, Latruda, I, I'm sure you had a great night last night, but just so you know, and then he... And Drugar will take out the lucky coin being like, I believe this thing was possessed by a fiend creature and then has jumped from the coin to Harry. Like, he you know, told you that it was a joke? He, he, I mean, Harry did, but that's what that's what a demon with a fiend would say because all the, I mean, everything else transpired was really messed up. So you banged her, right? Cool. That's what we were talking about. Oh, don't be so crass. Oh, She's a lady. Over. Sorry, you made love. <laughs> but yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you sleep, bud? Oh, I slept. I slept fine. Yeah, I slept fine. Uh, I had some weird dreams. How about you? I slept super restfully. Good. Not nervous at all. What type of dreams are we talk about? What's going on? Talk to me. <laughs> I'll use I'll use back. I'll use press digitation and I'll blink. And when I blink one time, my eyes will go yellow with cat eyes. And then when I blink again, it'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Drugar still has the internal dog. He's still fighting the good fight. <laughs> but before she sits down, she is going to walk over to you and she's going to hand Drugar um, a necklace with like a little charm on it. Thank you. What is this? Uh, this is the protection that I promised. It's beautiful. Uh, you notice that it matches the uh, necklace that Basil's wearing. They all have their breakfast. A couple more questions are asked, finding out the last little bit of uh, information about how to create a shrine in order to talk with the Dreamweaver. And then they head out uh, after grabbing uh, some supplies from Laurel. Um, I'm probably going to be <laughs> packing things into a bag because we're going to go on foot, aren't we? Because uh, we can't take the, the mules into yeah. the forest. So I'm just going to be packing supplies and stuff sure. into rucksacks for us. Uh, just like if if we end up spending multiple days out there, I've got some rations and some fire starters and just things like that. Okay, that makes just, sense. Look, there was one question that I forgot to ask Laurel that I'd like to ask now. In uh, sure, is there some kind of um uh you know symbol of the Dreamweaver? You know, some sort of um icon yeah the, there's like a few things that would be associated with her um obviously anything having to do with like creating tapestries um lavender valerian uh would both be associated with her uh when you go to make a shrine though you should uh th there are things that will make it 
work easier. Um, one, of course, is just the belief that it will work. Um, the other thing is to have uh, something representing each of the elements. Within those supplies, Laurel gives Drugar a talisman of protection. Uh, and then for the shrine, uh, she gives them a tapestry, some candles, some incense, some tea, some items that might be useful in the shrine building as they're associated with the Dreamweaver specifically. Basil, it's been been a, been a dream. Thank you so much <laughs> for all the food. I guess we we might be married now. I'm not sure, but I would be happy to have you. We're about to head on out. Do you have anything to go? Do you have any of that sweet jerky to go? Yeah, sure. And he'll he'll like pack you up like a little a little something for the three of you. Well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna uh, make sure Talis's hair is is still kept the way you know. Keep keep it back. Keep it nice. I'm gonna give her a little pat on the head. Yeah, um, and she'll she'll just like yeah. smile and say goodbye. Um, like may maybe like reach out and like touch your hand like when she says goodbye. Um, and no. like oh, I hope to see you again. I hope you come back. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> can can Drugar walk pat past uh, Talos and be like, he must. They must really like you because he. They usually Irish goodbye all the time. So this is a big. <sighs> they head out. Uh, they decide that they're going to walk until it is dark and then try to find somewhere uh, good to set up a shrine. Uh, they do this. I, th I, think I think the Dreamweaver would probably be a nighttime thing, just assuming. Yeah. Um, so maybe we could take the tea and stuff at night. So if we just walk until it's dark. So yeah, we, we you mean like to push it to the center and then, then use the night to our advantage and take the teas and stuff? Um, is there like a specific spot you're looking for? Like, do you want to try to find like a glade or are you just going to like sit down when you think it's right? Yeah, probably go off feeling more than anything. Honestly, that's exactly what I was thinking to do. Drugar would totally go off a feeling because he wouldn't okay. think of um, otherwise. I... Oh, maybe, maybe I could ask Fox. Ooh, that's a better idea. Oh, that's a good roll. Um, yeah, so uh, Fox finds um like a nice little glade it's like very open which is like kind of weird but like i mean obviously trees don't grow in rows in a forest so there's like a little bit of an open spot and there's even actually like a large stone in the center of the glade at first they think that just harry will sit inside the shrine um while drugar and latruda like kind of keep watch over him but it turns out that while they're setting up this shrine the beasts of the forest uh, create a perimeter around them and Drugar and Latruder are like fuck it I guess we're gonna go uh, along on the ride as well uh, not knowing really what's going to happen okay um, so as you guys like start setting this up um, Drugar will notice first because you can see further uh, that there are like beasts starting to like come at you like, come at you is the wrong word They're starting to like slowly notice. walk towards you and notice you from all directions um, at that point Drugar will go to Latruda being like hey Fox maybe get Fox on a bit of a perimeter because we have beasts approaching do they have the blue eyes I'm getting there <laughs> so oh, that's okay you. so uh, as, as they get closer like every so often you notice one of their eyes change and become glowing blue eventually all of them are glowing blue and you've noticed that they've like created an entire circle around you Ooh! they all face away from you and sit down spooky. oh oh they are protecting maybe hopefully <laughs> <laughs> um, well if that's the case i would look at literally be like if if we got backup do you want to join harry in that trance hmm Yes, that may be a good idea. I mean, you you guys could do an Maybe insight sure. check to see like what I, you I like gain it. from what these beasts are doing. Um, sorry, so it was a nineteen. <laughs> Is was that I got a nine? A nine. nine. I got, yeah, I got a fifteen. And a fifteen. 
Um, so obviously the 19 and the 15, um, the nine does not garner anything, but the other two, uh, you, you definitely get the sense that they are protecting you. Like they've set up like a perimeter. Uh, they, they like have like this understanding of like what's happening. They're recognizing, um, like the scent of lavender and they're recognizing like, just like the setting up of something religious. Um, and so they're... They're protecting that. Ooh. Well, I suppose we could also get in on the tea. Um, I'm a little um, skeptical that all three of us may need. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's, you, fuck it. let's all drink the tea. We're going to do it. All right. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I'm fine sitting out because you guys are naturally protected. I needed to have this, but I'm I'm in to ride this ride with you. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Cool. Gumbo, no? G Gumbo. Let's roll. Gumbo! Let's stop punching, Harry. Hey, thanks for checking out Chicken D&D. If you liked what you saw, click all the buttons down below. Subscribe, like, comment. You know the drill. Um, also, it'd be really cool if you came and checked us out live at Chicken D93 on Twitch, where you get to participate in the conversation or watch us play D&D &D on campaign days. Uh, thank you again so much. See you next time. Bye!